I absolutely love homegrown potatoes. Even though organic potatoes aren't that expensive at the store, their flavor doesn't compare to homegrown. Today I'll harvest our purple viking potatoes from this bed. Then I'll remove these peas which are done producing for the year and plant Malabar spinach to climb the trellis and Brussels sprouts in the bed below. I planted our purple viking potatoes here in mid-March under a layer of six mil greenhouse plastic. The seed potatoes that I used were saved from last year's harvest and I stored them over the fall and winter in paper bags inside a crisper drawer in the refrigerator. I planted the potatoes a few inches under the soil and then mulched the bed with several inches of leaves. I started harvesting a few new potatoes here and there in early July when the plants started to die back. But now that most of the plants have died back entirely, I'm going to go ahead and harvest the rest of the potatoes. Let's see what I find. Okay, to get started, I just brush aside some leaves and it doesn't take too long to find some potatoes. I'll save some of the smaller ones to use as seed potatoes for next year's harvest. Those are decent size. All right. oh, here's some more. So far looking good. I really like the striking purple color of the purple viking potatoes and then they have a nice white flesh to them. Well, so far I can't complain about the yield. Looking good so far. Let's get these two out of the way. I use my hands to dig for potatoes just because our soil is so friable. I don't really need to use a tool. And I'm less likely to damage the potatoes with my hands than I would with a fork. Well, I feel a big one. There's our biggest one so far. Most of them are medium sized, but that's okay. Okay, so this is what I found so far in about a square foot, which is pretty good. Not too shabby since I didn't have to pay for seed potatoes this year. I'll definitely be saving seed potatoes to plant again next year. Okay, let's see what we find in the second row. This bed is less than four by four feet and I probably planted the potatoes about 10 inches apart. Wow, there's a lot of them. Not too big, but there's a lot of them. Oh, here's another one. A little bit bigger. Now we're talking nice size. People often ask how we get our soil to be so soft. And I think the answer is more than anything else, leaf mulch. Leaf mulch does wonders for the soil. Makes it very friable and soft. This is actually just one of many potato harvests this year. I harvested Red New Orleans in June, and we'll harvest Yukon Golds later this month. And in August I'll harvest organic all blues, purple Peruvians, and a few other varieties. I forgot to mention earlier that I did amend the bed with vermicompost this spring, as well as mulch it with comfrey and grass clippings and leaves last fall. But otherwise I didn't use any amendments on the bed. Okay, I'm getting toward the end of the harvest, and I have to say I'm happy with the results. Especially considering I had already harvested a number of potatoes from this bed earlier in the month. And I grew all these without having to buy seed potatoes. So I'll definitely be saving some of these to plant next spring. Okay, now that I've gone through this by hand, let's use a garden fork to see if I can find any more potatoes. Well, it looks like I did a good job of digging these up by hand because I only found a couple more with a fork. Now I'll set them out in a sunny spot to let them dry off before I store them in the basement.
Okay, now let's take these peas down. We planted these in mid-March under cover at the same time that we planted the potatoes. We started harvesting the peas in May and finished our harvest just yesterday. When I remove old pea plants, I leave the roots in the ground because peas fix nitrogen and there may still be nitrogen nodules on the roots. Okay, let's get this to the compost pile. And now with the peas out of the way, I can go ahead and plant my Malabar spinach and Brussels sprouts. Malabar spinach isn't a real spinach. It's a tropical green that loves the summer heat and grows well on trellises. I started the Malabar spinach in biodegradable pots in June and now I'll simply plant the entire pot in the soil. And I'm careful not to bury them any deeper than they were in the pots. I'm planting them much closer than the recommended 12 inches because it hasn't been very hot this summer and I don't anticipate them growing as quickly as they would if it were really hot. By planting more plants I should get a decent amount of leaves even if they don't really take off in growth because it's not that hot out. Malabar spinach is a very succulent green which some people don't care for but we like it raw in stir fries and it's great in a number of Indian dishes. And here's our last plant. Hopefully now we'll get warm enough weather that these will take off and climb up the trellis. So far it hasn't been very warm this summer. Okay, now let's plant nine Brussels sprout plants in this bed. I started both Brussels sprouts and the Malabar spinach in June in pots outside. Let's lay them out in place. Brussels sprouts are the first fall crop I'm planting out this year. They're very cold hardy and if we're lucky we'll get a nice harvest this fall. I'm planting these up to their first true leaves. This gives the stems a little bit more support because they've been getting a little leggy. The recommended spacing for these is 16 to 18 inches apart. I'm a little bit closer than that, but hopefully they'll do all right. Look at all those worms in the potting mix. They'll be happier now they're in the soil. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish planting these and they'll be back to apply compost and mulch. Okay, I'm done planting. I've got my homemade compost here and free organic mulch. I'll spread a little bit of the compost on the soil surface and then top it off with mulch. That's all I'll do to feed these plants. You don't need to dig compost into the soil. Just apply it to the soil surface and let the soil organisms work it in. This compost isn't quite finished, which is all the more reason to apply it to the soil surface rather than digging it into the soil. Okay, we got the compost down. Now I'll put down a combination of pine needles and leaves. This is just what I have handy. Usually it's just leaves. This time I've got some pine needles mixed in. Okay, just about done with the mulch. With the mulch in place, I won't have to water nearly as much. And the mulch will feed the plants over time. I hope you enjoyed this brief glimpse into the One Yard Revolution garden as I harvest one crop and plant the next for a continuous harvest of fresh produce through the summer and into the fall. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.